today, more than ever, we have the answer to most of the problems that ail us. Um, and it lies within um, what you're putting into your body, you know, how you're living your life. Welcome to Radically Loved Radio. I am your host, Rosie Acosta, yoga teacher and teacher trainer, mindfulness coach, speaker, and creative writer. I am also the founder of radicallyloved.com, a website where you can go for more information about yoga, mindfulness, meditation, and lifestyle advice. On this podcast, we talk to people within our health and wellness community that are creating content through the ritualistic practice of yoga, meditation, or overall mindful living. We hope to create value in your life so that you can achieve your highest potential and live a radically loved life. To stay in touch with us, just follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Rosie Acosta and on Facebook at Radically Loved Rosie. You can sign up for our newsletter on radicallyloved.com to stay up to date on future workshops, retreats, and latest podcasts. I hope that Radically Loved Radio leaves you feeling inspired to create something powerful. My teacher, Yoga Rupa Raj Stryker, says, if you powerfully believe in the value you have to offer the world, your love and passion for it will be an unstoppable force. Thanks for listening. This podcast is brought to you by our very special sponsor, Ayurveda. So Ayurveda is the sister science to yoga. Ayurveda relies on the intelligence of mother nature and our own body's ability to heal. Most of you know that as a health coach and a nutritionist, I have spent most of my career always trying to find more natural and holistic modalities. I have an autoimmune disease, so this makes it a little bit more challenging, but it's manageable nonetheless so long as my body is in full balance. A couple of weeks ago, I was talking to my dear friend and fellow podcaster, Sahara Rose, and I was telling her I was having all of these issues with my stomach, my digestion, and she recommended this brand called Uveda. So I did my due diligence and I researched them and I found that this company has really created uh, an incredible brand of supplements to support everything that we love about our bodies and our body's natural ability to heal, but also using the tools of Ayurveda. So they use this as their foundation to everything that they do. As with everything, I'm always a bit dubious because I know there's not a one fix all supplement or brand, but I tried it. I used both the joints supplement and the digestion. And I'll tell you, after using it for about a month, I noticed such a huge difference. They are just such an incredible company and I was able to chat with them and talk to them not only about the high quality of their product, but the high quality of their brand and their company and what they're trying to do. I quickly found that these people are my people and all we're trying to do is create a ripple effect in the world so that we can continue to impact people's lives and create better health, deeper connections, and just overall healthy living. I'm so excited to not only partner with them, but to have them share a special code for all of the listeners. Go to uveda.com and type in Rosie, that's R-O-S-I-E, at checkout to get a special discount on all of their products. Thanks so much for listening. Here we are at the somewhere location. <laughs> like an undisclosed location. A, uh, yeah, I don't think this has a proper name. We're outdoors. We're outdoors. We're sitting next to a, a rose bed. It's all good. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, Marco, thank you so much for doing this. You thank know you. that I've been such a huge fan forever. I've known you for a long time, and you've been most influential in my life. So thank, thank you, you so much thank for you, doing thank you. this. Thanks for kind words. Um, So for all of you listening, this is a very special interview. Not only are we going to talk about some really great uh, topics, but I really want to talk to Marco about what's currently inspiring him and where he thinks the world of health is going, because he is a guru and an authority. So yes, thank you. Thank you for doing this again. Thank you. So great. Thank you. Thank you. So one of my big, uh, I mean, I have a lot of questions for you, but I think that just going back to what we were even just talking about a little while, um, what has been 
what has been the thing that has driven you the most to create the career that you have? Like, what's the driving force? Truth. It, it lies in truth. Um, uh, at a very early age, I knew that I was put on this earth uh, to help others. Um, I remember being a kid, uh, seeing my grandmother take heart medication, blood pressure medication, uh, and saying, wow, it just seems weird um, that someone has to live on medication every single day, multiple times a day. And I, and I remember uh, I would always tell her, I'm going to take care of you when I get older. I'm going to become a doctor and I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to take care of you. I mean, I was you know, just a kid. I remember six, seven years old when I started to have those thoughts. Um, fast forward, um, the truth is really what has driven me to get to this point because the reality is that while I wanted to become a doctor at the age of six, by the time I got to college and I was doing my pre-med work in biology, I realized uh, one hospital um, visit too many. I was, I was spending a lot of time uh, in hospitals, sitting in on surgeries and watching what was going on because I've always been fascinated by, uh, by, by health, by wellness, by um, the way the human body works, how fascinating this machine is. Um, we think that the phone we have in our hands is like the greatest supercomputer of all time, but the reality is that nothing compares to our beautiful bodies, nothing. Um, and um, I remember sitting in on this one surgery, and when I left, I had a bunch of questions. And when I started to ask the questions, I was looked at like I was an alien. I was like, uh, did I ask the wrong thing? Did I ask something that was inappropriate? But I realized that I was asking questions that the people that I was um, uh, hoping would answer them uh, felt uncomfortable. And it was really around, you know, why do we do this? And why don't we practice that? And is this person going to get some help, you know, to, to... How do you create behavior modification? How do you bring behavior modification into this person's life who just spent, you know, four hours in surgery because of their lifestyle habits. Yeah. How do we help them? And, and they looked at me and smiled, kind of snickered, and were like, oh, you've got so much to learn. Um, I realized at that moment in time that I'd come to a crossroads, that I needed to make a decision. If I was going to live my truth, I probably should not be pursuing a career in medicine. Uh, so I pivoted, and I took my degree in biology and went into exercise physiology, and then um, decided that I would help people stay healthy, um, because I, I, I really believe that um, we are in a society where people are too accustomed to living reactively. They wait for something to happen and then they, they you know, swear they're going to do everything in their power to get better. Yet when we're better, we don't do everything we can to stay better. Yeah. Um, and we need to learn to live more proactively. We need to learn to take responsibility for our actions and, and understand that our actions aren't just affecting us. They're affecting the people that we love most, our kids, our parents, the people around us, um, you know, our, our community. Um, and that's something that today, more than ever, we have the answer to most of the problems that ail us. Um, and it lies within uh, what you're putting into your body, you know, how you're living your life. But primarily what you put into your body, what's at the tip of your fork. So for me, it's really been about uncovering those truths and bringing them to light and sharing them with as many people as possible. Oh, I love that so much. It's so true. And, and even just going back to you know, when you were having this realization in, in our culture, even in our, you know, society, we didn't have as many tools as we do now. Yeah. So how were you able to, to create those modalities and, and see that it, it came down to habit forming? How, how were you able to do that when it wasn't clearly accessible at that time, as much as it is now, comparatively? Yeah, I'm eternally curious, so I've always been curious about everything. I, I've, I think I've been a performance junkie my whole life. I just <laughs> didn't know that it was that. Um, I've always been fascinated with how the body works, how everything works in general. Like, I could stare at a window, you know, going up and down in a car uh, for five minutes just trying to figure out what, what it was that was, you know, getting this, you know, glass to slide up and down this little slot in the door. Yeah. Um, so I've always been fascinated with how things work more than anything, how we work, right? Like you get cut and you scab and your body heals itself. And we've got this unbelievable machine that knows how to take care of itself. We just gotta get out of the way. More often than not, we don't know how to get out of the way and we don't know how to get out of the way because of the things that we do. And I got to a point where I realized that, you know, I was tired of hearing that, you know, disease was hereditary. And I, 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 I knew enough to know that that was not true, right? I knew enough to know that when you look at a family, 
if the parents, you know, for example, are morbidly obese, there's a really good chance that the kids are morbidly obese. And it's not because it's in their genetics, it's because they're passing those habits of what they're putting into their body, the sedentary lives that they're living into the hands of their kids. Um, so the, the reality is that I realized at a very young point in my, my life that everything was going to be affected with how you lived your life. We're but a sum of our habits. Right? If you are the type of person that gives up, then you more often than not will tend to give up. If you're the kind of person that always wants to find the solution, then that's just the way that you're going to wire yourself. So I realized that in order to bring about behavioral modification, it would be much easier if you had the help of habits, right? Because we don't think about brushing our teeth for the next, you know, whatever, however many years you're going to live, another 70, 80 years, whatever. You don't think, I'm going to do this every single day, breakfast and night, you know, before breakfast and before I, you know, go right. to bed um, every single day. Because if you did, you probably wouldn't do it. But at a certain point in your life, you develop this habit where it becomes automatic. You know, it's something that you just don't think about. You just do. And we are a collection of habits. If you look at your day, you realize that more often than not, you probably have the same thing for breakfast. You go to take the same route to work, whether you take the bus or public transportation or drive a certain way. You're not trying to find a new way to work every day. Why? Because you've created a habit of, you know, on how you're going to get there. And our body's really, really great at efficiency, right? It knows how to create efficiencies. And that's why we create habits, because our body, in its infinite wisdom, knows that it wants to be able to make certain things easier so you can focus on the other things that you want to be really focused on. Um, so I knew that, um, I remember when I, when I had opened my first gym, uh, M-Cycle in Miami, yeah. the, the spinning gym, um, I remember that I would watch these women that would come to the gym every single day and they would take a spinning class. And I had just opened the gym, I had no money left, I had literally poured all my savings into opening this first facility, and I was like, this has to work, if it doesn't work, I'm done. But I know it's gonna work, right? It's just going to work. It was the first spinning studio in Florida, right? So I knew early on that I had something special. Um, I just wanted the people to understand what it was that they were a part of, and for them to be able to share it with their friends. So when I saw women coming on a regular basis, I thought, this is fantastic. Some of these women are overweight, yeah. Many of them were overweight and they needed to lose a few extra pounds. And I thought, this is fantastic. They're going to you know, spend two, three, four times a week. They're going to lose the weight that they need to lose. They're going to share it with their friends. And it's just going to become like this incredible phenomenon. It became an incredible phenomenon, but it was in spite of the fact that these women weren't losing the weight. And, and I realized that something was happening. I stopped one day and I was like, how is it possible that these women are coming every single day? They've developed such beautiful habits around exercise, yet they're not changing their bodies. Nothing's happening. And I realized that they had, while they had developed really beautiful habits around exercise, they hadn't done so around the food that they put into their bodies. Because the exercise for them was like, you know, a moment to socialize, a moment to get together with other girls and to just yeah. hang out and catch up and whatnot. But they were eating on their own. They weren't really thinking about what they were putting into their bodies. And, and that was like an aha moment for me. I, I remember that while I was in college, I had studied, uh, uh, during a, a psychology course, I had studied behavior uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and creating habits. Yeah. And the, the, the whole, you know, creating a synaptic pathway, creating a pathway in your brain that would make certain uh, things easier. Um, and I thought, you know, this is interesting. This is a really great opportunity for me to test something. And uh, my, if my hypothesis is correct, if we help these women develop healthier habits around eating, all of the change in their body that they're looking for is going to come effortlessly. Yeah. And it did. Um, so that's where it's, that, that sort of like behavior component started to come into play. Yeah. How, you know, people always say that habits start at home. So They do. They do, yeah, right? Absolutely. I mean, you write Without about this. Yeah. This is the thing. So. Two, two questions, how are you able to change the habits in your home, especially, you know, maybe with your family, and how are you able to help your, your clients, uh, your students, the people that, that come to you, how are you able to help them ratify their habits that are non-constructive? Yeah, um, you know, this is something that is a constant topic of conversation for me because it's, it's, um, it's really important to understand that you have to be able to break it down, right? You can't right change your life in one you know swoop but you can do it with a collection of different uh, you know habits or or behavior modifications so for me it's something that you know I, I focus on what is it that you are trying to change um, and then we break it down to like the essential elements that that make that up for example let's talk about 
um, exercising. You know, some people don't get any exercise because they don't have the time, they don't have the money to go to a gym, they yeah. are you know slammed with work or dropping kids off at school or what have you. So for me, it's really about okay, let's go into your personal environment. Let's talk about how we make this happen. How do we bring about this change? So yeah. you're a single mother that has to take three kids to school in the morning, and you don't have time for anything before you leave your house. So. I always question, well, can we get up a little bit earlier? Can we get up 30 minutes earlier? Because if you get up a little bit earlier, then you have a little bit of time for yourself. If you can't get up a little bit earlier, after you put the kids to bed, is there something you could do at home? Can you turn on the TV? Can you go on YouTube and find some free workout videos? There's plenty out there. You and I both know there is yeah. more than sufficient where you don't have to leave your house. If you want to get it done, you can get it done. I'm a big proponent of taking time for yourself and, and because I, I truly believe that you can't give the best of yourself to others if you are not the best of yourself, right? So I, I really believe in, in practicing self-love and self-care, but let's just put that aside for a second. At the very, very least, you should be able to take 15, 20 minutes for yourself to get something going, yeah. right? And if you do that, that is a, a beautiful cycle that perpetuates itself, right? So motion begets motion, right? And, 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 and sleep begets sleep, and, and one good action begets another good action. So it starts with one action, right? Take one step at a time. So you're not exercising, this is how we're gonna do it. You're not eating healthy foods, or your kids don't wanna eat healthy foods. Well, it starts with what you're eating, right? And I've always said that our kids don't learn from what we tell them, they learn from what they see, from what we show them, right? Yeah. So you can tell your kids all day long, you shouldn't be eating you know, potato chips, uh, whatever on the sofa, but if you're eating potato chips on the sofa, they're gonna practice the same habit. Um, your kids are not going to eat, I don't know, let's pick something, uh, hot dogs with yeah. uh, you know, junky ingredients on top of them if you don't have them at home and if you're not already eating them yourself, right? So my kids are, have been born and raised on a completely plant-based diet yeah. and people always say, oh my God, how did you do that? That's like an absolute impossibility. Well, they watch us do it at home. Right? We don't have junk food at home. We don't have super processed foods um, in our cupboard. We yeah. don't have you know, dairy at home. We don't have animal products at home. So they've learned to eat what was around. Um, there's a reason why culturally we stick to the foods that are within our culture, right? Like Hispanics will eat like rice and beans and, and, and pork and these foods. And, and maybe, uh, I don't know, someone that lives in, in the Middle East will eat Middle Eastern food and baba ganoush and hummus and yeah, all yeah. of the, why, why, how does that happen? What, do they have a different palate than we have? No, they've been exposed to these foods from a very young age. So if you expose your kids to these foods at a young age, they're gonna tend to wanna eat them more often than not especially if you're eating them and you're preparing them for yourself at home. So I think that it starts in breaking down what it is that your goal is to the simplest element and then adding one step at a time every single day to try to make it um, come to life. And th th for me, the easiest thing is as simple as like when you want to bring about change, change something really, really simple. It, it's, a, it's a slight reminder of what it is uh, that you want to do or what you're trying to accomplish that day. And it can start with something as simple as sleeping on the opposite side of the bed. Like as simple as that. It's like a daily reminder. You wake up and you're like, wait, I'm, cause you know, we sleep on the yeah, same, same side, side of bed all the time. All the time so, yeah. But if you flip that, the next morning you're gonna wake up and realize that something changed. Yeah. And that change oftentimes is all you need to remind yourself, okay, today is gonna be a better day than yesterday was. I live by the Japanese practice of Kaizen, which is continuous self-improvement. And if you can bring that into your home, the possibilities are endless. So how, if somebody that's listening to this and they're wanting to create change in their life, they're wanting to have a, a more plant-based diet or they're wanting to just get more inspired in their life, even as an entrepreneur, I want to talk to you about that too. But what would you, what would you say to them? You know, what do you say to people that are feeling so stuck where they are? Yeah, it, to me, it's about progress, not about perfection. Right? It's about progression. Um, a lot of times what happens is that we tend to be so focused on perfection that when we don't achieve it, we just give up completely because we're like, the hell with it. I didn't get there, so I'm done. And we think, oh my God, it's such a daunting thought of going 100% plant-based or associating with the V word and going vegan that we're like so intimidated by it that we can't take that first step, right? right. But it starts one meal at a time, right? right? With one meal. That's it, just one meal. So if you're the person that is you know, completely lost and you don't know how to take that first step, just think of one meal a day, just one meal. 
Let's change one meal a day. Which is the most difficult meal of the day for you and which is the easiest meal? Maybe we start with the easiest meal. You're like, you know what? I'm the kind of person that just like skips breakfast and I don't really think about it too much. And then I, at lunch, I like gorge on something that I shouldn't be eating because I'm so hungry by the time lunch comes around that I just can't help myself. And then for dinner, forget it, the wheels come off because I'm at home and the kids are around and I've just got to make something fast and they want to eat and my husband, whatever the case might be, right? I say, okay, let's start with breakfast. Let's think about it. It's so easy to make overnight oats. It's so easy to make, you know, chia pudding. It's so easy to make avocado toast. Yeah. It's so easy to make a plant-based breakfast is like effortless. There are plenty of recipes online. There, you could Google, uh, you know, inexpensive vegan recipes. You could Google vegan breakfast. You could go on our platform. You can go to 22daysnutrition.com and you find a ton of... Cookbook. Yeah, you can get a bunch of... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. Um, you, can go on, uh, you can go on our site and get inspiration, you know, from the different items that we post, whether it be on Instagram or on Facebook. And there's so much inspiration everywhere. You just have to look for it, right? It's everywhere. So something as simple as like an avocado toast. And the beauty about breakfast is that you could repeat the same thing every single day. You wouldn't think differently, right? You wouldn't, you wouldn't think twice about it because most people are creatures of habit for breakfast. So you find something that you love. And now you're one step closer. You're a third of the way there. You're 33% of the way there, right? Because you have, let's say, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So you're like, oh my God, this is easy. Maybe I could start doing lunch. I have so many friends that have gone completely plant-based that never in their wildest dreams would have thought they were going to go plant-based uh, plant because they started one meal at a time. Right? They were like, okay, I'm going to do breakfast. I'm just going to do breakfast. And then they're like, oh, wow, that feels so good. And I feel so energized. And then by the time lunch comes around, I eat like whatever processed. And then I don't feel as great as I was feeling during breakfast. So then I incorporated a plant-based lunch. And then I felt so great for breakfast and lunch. And then by the time dinner came around, and it just kind of perpetuates. Like I said, one good yeah. meal will perpetuate another good meal. Because more often than not, what happens is if you grab a donut or you grab soup, something super unhealthy for breakfast, by the time lunch comes around, you're like, oh, the hell with it. I already had whatever, a donut for breakfast or something out of my toaster um, that wasn't healthy and was super processed and whatever the day's gone that happens and then you're like oh it's already the fifth of the month I'll start next month oh it's already May I'll start you know next year or I'll start on Monday I'll start Monday I'll start, I'll start next yeah. week I'll start uh, tomorrow never comes yeah. don't don't put it off for tomorrow tomorrow never comes tomorrow's always tomorrow it's not today so just stop think about it and say you know what I want to take control of my health. I want to be in the driver's seat because it's much more, important, much more important to understand what you are doing to continue to stay healthy or to, or to become healthier than it is to understand what you need to do once you're already sick or once you're already on pharmaceutical drugs, yeah. which become like a subscription service, right? It's the most evil sub subscription service on earth. You yeah. you wind up getting on a drug and then you're like, oh my God, if only, well, don't wait to the if only. And if you're already on pharmaceutical drugs and you want to get away from them, you can. You just can't look for the solution at your doctor's office one day a year. It's just not going to happen. It's not. You have to be in control. You have to be proactively involved in your health by eating better foods, by getting more exercise, by moving more. You don't even have to go to a formal gym. You could do it at home. You could walk around the neighborhood. You could take your kids on a bike ride. You could go walking with your family after dinner. What better time to unplug from you know, social media and from all this digital craze that's around us 24 seven and just go for a walk with your family and just, I wanna hear about your day. How was your day? How was school? How are you doing? How's everything? You know, we don't take enough time to do that. And I think that when we find the time, when we make the time to do these things, we will not only benefit as a family, but we benefit as individuals. Yeah, so. and we benefit by helping the ecosystem. With, without a doubt, without, without a doubt. I mean, yeah. the more, you know, the more we move towards a plant-based diet, the more we reduce greenhouse emissions, the more we, uh, you know, the more compassionate we are to the animals, the, the healthier we other. are, yes. the, the happier we are. And yeah. I believe that health is happiness. And if we're healthy, we're happy. And if we're happy, we tend to treat people a little bit kinder, a little, have a little more empathy and or a little more uh, loving to each other. And if there's one thing we need in this world today is a little more love. You're so right. A hundred percent. I agree. So what do you think about, I mean, I don't want to get, I don't know that I want to go down this rabbit hole, but you know, a lot of, um, the way that we were conditioned, especially, you know, I grew up here in LA. Um, a lot of the options at school were not healthy. 
And we grew up with having vending machines at school and like having Pizza Hut options and Taco Bell options. And so, you know, we're kind of primed with having these easy, accessible, processed, cheap foods. How Do you think that there's a way that we can begin to change the system for the next generation of kids? Like, how, how do we do that? Is that like just a big undertaking to try and go in and try, try and educate the next generation of, of kids growing up? It is. It's, it's not an easy task. I'm not going to sit here and, and lie to you because you and I both know that it's a massive <laughs> undertaking, right? It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a massive, massive undertaking, but it starts one school at a time. Yeah. It starts one kid at a time. Um, I, I'll tell you, um, in, in South Florida, in Miami, where we live, um, we, uh, our kids go to an amazing school, a really, really amazing school. And when my kids started at the school, I remember going uh, the first day and looking at their classroom and I was like, wow, I wish I had gone to a school like this. This school is amazing. They had a smart board. They have all these iPads. I mean, it was just like absolutely mind blowing. I was like, this is the cool. It doesn't smell like a stinky old, you know, school. <laughs> you know, how you could close your eyes and walk into a school. You know exactly that you're in a school. You're like, wait, yeah, don't the, let the me smell. guess. I'm in an elementary school, right? <laughs> With the smell of the stale crayons yes, and everything. Yes, the stale, the the humidity, the mold. The, you know, the, our school has like asbestos in it. It was terrible. <laughs> they were like, yeah, we need to remove that because it's cancerous. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so I was like, wow, this is really great. I'm so happy that I've that I've got the good fortune. That, that life has gifted me with and blessed me with the, the ability to be able to send my kids to an amazing school. And then I sat there and watched them pick their lunch for the day. And the lunch was like pizza, macaroni, um, corn dog. Some, some, and I was like, wait, what? I mean, we have evolved like light years from when I was in school right. and yet we're still serving the same exact food? No way, we've got to do better. It's a responsibility. Look, it would have been really easy for me to leave that day and go home and decide that I was gonna pack lunch for my kids for the rest of the year, but it would have been a disservice to the rest of the kids at the school. And now that I know that that's a problem, I need to step up and do something about it because as citizens of this world, we're all here together, we're all in this together. So I can't just walk away knowing that there may be some parents that don't have the money to make, you know, or the time or the resources to make lunch and send it um, with their kids to school on a daily basis. So I took the responsibility upon myself and I walked into the, you know, the office uh, and I said, this is the most amazing school I've ever seen, yet we're lacking in our lunch program and we need to fix this. What can I do to help? And I just rolled up my sleeves and got in there and made sure that they, today I'm really proud to say that they have a dozen plant-based options every single day. They have a beautiful salad bar. They removed all the high fructose corn syrup juices from the cafeteria. It wasn't easy. I had to walk in there on multiple occasions and you know say this is what I want for my kids and this is what we're going to do. Um, and you know, I was lucky enough that I that I was. Um, speaking to an audience that was receptive yeah. um, and I guess maybe fortunate as well that this is what I do um, but in many cases parents aren't armed with the tools that I am yeah. um, and it's really unfortunate but I think it starts one child at a time I, I've always said it to my friends they're like well you know I go to these restaurants and they don't have like the options that I'm looking for okay I'll tell you what do you think that McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's or Kentucky Fried Chicken are going to go out of business tomorrow if people stop buying their food? No. You know what they're going to do? They're going to pivot. They're going to evolve. They're going to start serving food that we want because we as consumers have the power. We don't realize that. A lot of times we think that we're at the mercy you know, of others, that we have to give agency over our health to the big industries, to big pharma. That's not the case. If you stop going to McDonald's or if you, let's say, continue to go to McDonald's, but instead of buying whatever junky food they have, you got salad bar and everyone else did the same thing. Guess what's going to happen to that salad bar? The next time you go in, it's going to be five times bigger because they're going to realize that people aren't buying what they were buying before. The trends are changing. So they're going to follow what it is that we're voting for. But you can't just vote by saying something. You got to vote with your dollars. You got to vote with your pocket. Because a lot of times you have people say, oh yeah, I don't buy junk food. I don't keep junk food in my house. I don't eat anything that has gluten. I don't eat overly processed foods. And then you open the cupboard and it's full, stacked to the top, you know, for a hundred people to have, you know, to gorge on junk food for a year, right? We can't do that. We can't be hypocritical about the way we live our lives. If you truly aren't for that, then you have to make sure that they know you're not for that by not 
promoting it by not supporting it with your dollars because we vote every single day multiple times with our pocketbook right it's not enough to just be vocal about it you have to put your actions where your voice is and i think that if, if as parents as a as citizens of community members, we all gathered and we, and, and I don't mean like having a tall, you know, town hall meeting and bringing everybody together and saying, okay, we need to change the food. That might be helpful, but the reality is that it starts with our kids, right? Okay, what can you do for your child? And then maybe have a conversation with another parent and have that conversation with another parent. We can change the system and it's slowly changing. It's a big freighter that's yeah. going to be very slow moving, but the more active we are, the more the change we're going to see, the, the greater the change we're going to see. But it starts with us. Ultimately, you know, we're all responsible for our health and the health of our family. And we've got yeah. to come together to, you know, to, to bring this up to light. Yeah. And I think just kind of going, just uh, elaborating a little bit on that, I feel like it, it, the onus does rely on us. We have to Without be the ones that make the choice and make the decision to create change and utilize our our money wisely so that we can help promote the companies that are creating more sustainable change for our health and for the, uh, the planet, yeah. I looked at um, a, a um, graph that was sent to me a couple of days ago and, and it had all the genetically modified um, you know, foods that we're growing in this country. And it was something like, you know, uh, soy is now up to 94% genetically modified in this country. Why do you think that's so? Because we're buying it. Right? If you choose organic, there's going to be more organic. Why is organic more expensive? Why? Why is it more expensive? I'll tell you why. Because we buy more conventional GMO than we buy organic. The minute we start to buy more organic, it's economies of scale. Right? We have to choose the better for you products. We have to choose the better foods. We have to choose organic produce. We have to choose more produce. And the produce department won't shrink. It's only going to get bigger. What they're going to remove is all the middle aisles that we don't need with all the overly processed foods, with all the ingredients that we don't need to put into our body, which we don't know what the long-term effects are going to be of them. We already know whether it's looking at the blue zones or looking at the China study or looking at Dr. Esselstyn's work or looking at Dr. Dean Ornish's work. We already know that the more we lean towards a plant-based diet, the healthier we're going to be. That, that's a whole food plant-based diet. That's not like you know, a vegan version of a Twinkie. That is a whole food plant-based diet. Ingredients that we bring, that we cook and prepare foods at home with, right? That's how we're going to yeah. bring about change. That's how we're going to bring about sustainable lifestyle change. Um, and, I, and I think that the time is now. What I'm really excited about is that there seems to be an elevated consciousness um, that has taken hold. Um, and, it's, and it's only growing by day. Um, and, and, I, and I truly believe in this like, collective consciousness uh, for, for greater good. Um, and I'm eternally optimistic. And I, and I truly believe that people want what's best for them and for their families. They just haven't had the information. But now more than ever, the information is readily accessible. And the, the, the proof is, 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 I mean, absolutely overwhelmingly glaring, pointing to the fact that the more you lean towards a plant-based diet, the healthier you're going to be. The more you lean towards a plant-based diet, the more you're going to reduce risk of heart disease. We just finished a clinical trial um, last week uh, in New Jersey at Holy Name Hospital. Um, it's, it's an absolute, absolutely amazing facility. It's the largest privately owned hospital in New Jersey. And we went in there and did a clinical trial comparing the, the benefits of a plant-based diet to a standard American diet and a vegetarian diet. Over the course of 22 days, we reduced LDL cholesterol, the most dangerous form of cholesterol directly related to heart disease, yeah. by 40%. You heard that right. By 40%, we reduced LDL cholesterol in three weeks and a day. If that was a pharmaceutical drug, it would be a trillion dollar drug. It would be an absolute blockbuster, yet it's not. So what are we missing? We'll rush to take drugs that we know are going to destroy your insides, that are only going to treat symptoms, never treat the underlying cause. Yet when someone tells you they have the solution with zero, zero side effects, right? All upside. We're like, eh, I don't know. It's a little radical. Yeah. You know, it's a little radical to go 100%. I'm not as radical as you are. 100% plant-based, that's a bit much. Yet, the same person that says that is okay with being sawed in half down the middle of their chest, having veins pulled out of their leg and put into their heart when they have their, you know, second or third open heart surgery. That's not radical. It's not radical to cut someone's chest. It's not radical to take a pharmaceutical drug every single day of your life 
knowing that it will destroy something else. It's either going to destroy your liver or your kidneys or maybe both and wreak havoc to the rest of your system in trying to just bring down whether it's cholesterol or your sugar, what have you. Yeah. When we know, we know without a shadow of a doubt that with simple behavior modification, we could bring about the changes that we're looking for and with zero side effects while empowering our family with the same information to prevent this from happening to them. I don't know. Am I alone here? No, you're preaching to the choir over okay. here. It's Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is, this is what we're trying to get out into the world. No, I, I totally agree. And I, I'm curious as to, you know, definitely what you eat is a large percent of everything else, your mental state. Obviously, if you eat a more plant-based diet, you feel clearer, you feel m more able to focus. Obviously, your your biological stats are better. Everything is, is more improved. Um, how does our external environment play into our health? Like the people we're surrounded by or, you know, being on social media too long. I know this is again a big broad question, but I'm just curious as to what your thoughts are on that. Um, how do we uh, get to this without it being, uh, without it going in a hundred different directions? Because I have an idea for all of it, right? I have thoughts <laughs> on all of it. Um, social media can be really distracting. Um, and, and I truly believe that if you look at the numbers of how much time we're spending, by the way, you could go on your phone and you could literally see how many hours you've spent on social media through your own phone by going into the settings. You, you know how many hours you've spent. If you look at that, you realize that you have time to go to the gym. You have time to make food from scratch. You probably have time to grow your own organic garden if you really look at the time. And you may have time for a second job, <laughs> right? And if anyone got access of it, you might not have your first job, right? So we really have to look at it carefully and understand that we're spending a lot of time on social media. And the sad part of it is that more often than not, it's not positive. Right. Right? It's making people feel insecure. It's making people feel... Um, like lesser versions of themselves um, and and I'm not really getting a whole lot from people telling me that they're growing from social media right um, and and in my opinion if it's not growing it's dead right so we have to continuously grow um, so you know that's one side of it right uh, uh, another part of it is that you are you're an average of the people you hang out the most with, you spend the most time with, right? So like if you look at the people that you spend the most time with, you're probably quite similar to most of them. Pick great friends, pick amazing people. Don't, you know, in my mind, it's not about trying to have a hundred friends or a thousand friends in the social media age of counting likes and counting followers and counting friends. It's about having quality, not quantity. Surrounding yourself with quality not quantity. That's what's most important. Surrounding yourself with people that are going to love you, that, that celebrate you for being who you are, that celebrate you for being a one of one, right? For celebrating your amazingness on a daily basis. Um, I think that we need to be more vigilant um, and more selective about the people we spend our time with and the people we share our um, space with. Um, because I think that there are a lot of people out there that are in toxic relationships that can't get out of the space that they're in because of the environment that they're in. So I think that the environment does play a very important role. Um, and it's, it's not as simple as saying, you know, diet is 80%, exercise is 19%. You're, it, it's not that simple. It really isn't. Um, it's simple to bring it together in that it doesn't have to be about the numbers. It just has to be about the awareness, knowing that you have to surround yourself with good people. You have to move a little more. Sitting is the new smoking, right? We sit around way too much. And now with this age of everything being digital and having access to just about everything and anything that you want in the comfort of your home, you don't have to leave your house anymore to buy groceries, you don't have to leave your house anymore to pick up food that you didn't make that someone else prepared for you, you really don't have to leave your house at all, right? So for me, it's really about how do you create balance in your life? Understanding all of these things is how you bring about balance, right? Understanding that, you know, for you and I, it probably is a little bit easier than for someone growing up today because this is the only world that they know. Yeah. For me, at least, I remember being in a home where the only phone you had was a phone that was connected to the wall. Uh, and if someone called at seven at night while you were having dinner, your mom would probably curse them out. 
And if they called at nine o'clock at night, they'd get hung up on because you weren't supposed to call someone's house at this time. Right. Where now we're this 27, you know, 24 seven vicious yeah. cycle of not just information, but sometimes negative information that's coming at you from many different angles. Um, I had a conversation with somebody that was like, you know, I'm really suffering from, uh, from insomnia. Um, and I just don't know what to do. I'm at the point where I'm ready to take, you know, go to my doctor to get some drugs because I just can't sleep at night. And I, and I said, well, why don't we, I mean, it, the, the, the easy fix is going to your doctor, right? Or it seems like the easy fix, the quick fix is going to your doctor and getting them to prescribe something, but why don't we do an assessment of what you're doing? And she was like, what? I was like, well, um, do you watch TV in bed? And she's like, well, yeah. And I said, okay, do you, do you, what kind of TV do you watch? Well, I watch TV and then I also have an iPad and then I'm on my iPad, I'm watching Netflix or Hulu or what have you. Um, and, um, and I also um, uh, like to read. I'm like, okay, fantastic. And um, what about social media? Oh yeah, definitely. I'm checking social media right up until the moment I fall asleep. And if the phone rings or I get an alert, I'll wake up and I'll check my alert and then I'll go back to bed. I'm like, okay, well, Without knowing anything else, I won't even ask you what you ate, how long, how many hours before you went to bed you ate your dinner, how much water you drank, how much caffeine. Let's just eliminate everything else. Just that alone, you're conditioning your body for so much while you're in bed that your body doesn't know what it's supposed to do when it's in bed, right? Bed is for two things, right? One of them is sleeping, the other one is making love, right? Do more of both of those and less of everything else, right? So like if we sit in bed and read a book, while reading is fantastic, you should do it somewhere that's not in bed because the minute you get in bed and you open up a book, you're conditioning your body to believe that the moment you get in bed, you're supposed to be alert, you're supposed to be reading, you're supposed to be aware. The same thing goes with a bright screen in your face, whether it's an iPad or a television. We want to be in darkness. There's, there's this balance that happens, right, where the, our circadian rhythm, right, tells us when we're, that's why it gets dark at night, you know, yeah. it's telling our body to shut down, but if you're putting a bright light in your eyes, then all of a sudden your body thinks, oh wait, it's not night, it's daytime. So there's so much that happens there. So it, it boils down to like essential things like that to a much broader picture of like, am I getting enough exercise? Am I getting enough air? Am I getting enough vitamin D by getting outside and just taking a walk for 15 minutes on a daily basis? Am I putting the right foods into my body? And while it seems super overwhelming, like I said, it starts with one thing. Okay, let me just get the right breakfast in. Got it, check. Let me get the right lunch in. Got it, check. Let me get the right dinner in, check. Let me get 15 minutes or more of exercise daily. Got it. Let me make sure that I am reevaluating and sort of assessing the people that I spend the most time with. Because if I don't want to be around, you know, I want to complain less and I want to be much happier with my life and I want to have a more positive outlook, then you probably shouldn't hang out with people that are always bitching, moaning, complaining, and, and you know, uh, talking bad or down upon everyone that they know. You want to be around people that are positive and optimistic and uplifting and look at you and it's like they're looking at a ray of sunshine. You want to make people feel like that, but you also want people to make you feel like that. Yeah. And if you're doing all of that, it becomes effortless because then it's, it goes back and this is like a beautiful way to, to like full circle back to where we started. You create these habits in your life where now you're living the life that you truly want to live and not just sitting on the passenger seat in the life that you don't want to be in. You're actually driving in the life that you want to be living. And that to me is truly living. So good, Marco. So freaking good. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Um so I only have a couple more questions for you and just to kind of round it out, it what would be your top three tips on creating a new habit? If you can think of three or five or however many you want to tell us. Um, for creating a new habit. <clears throat> well, I think it starts with identifying what it is that you're trying to change. And uh, more often than not, what happens is that our, our new habits don't line up with the habits that we're trying to replace. So, for example, something as easy as someone wants to quit smoking, right? And they, someone tells them, oh, well, you should, you know, smoking, uh, we already know smoking isn't good for you, so when you, when you get stressed out, just exercise. And you're like, oh, cool, that sounds like a good idea. And then you're at, you know, work, and 11 o'clock comes by, and your boss screams at you, and, you know, the stress is super high, and you're like, oh, great, cigarette, oh, no, I'm not supposed to smoke, I'm supposed to act exercise I can't exercise now so it doesn't align right mm -hmm. with what it is that you're trying to correct 
So you have to make sure that you're thinking about it, right? It, you have to plan. This is like a scavenger hunt, right? You don't just get the list and you run and try to do everything. You sit down and you're like, okay, how am I gonna go about this? And you create a plan, right? So my first tip is plan it out, right? Make sure that it makes sense because more often than not, people don't plan to fail, they fail to plan, right? So plan it out. That's the first thing that you have to think about. And if you're gonna try to stop smoking, okay, when do I smoke? Okay, I smoke when I get stressed. When does that happen? Oh, hell, that happens at all times during the day. Okay, so what can I do that is similar to smoking but isn't quite smoking? Bubble gum. Okay, buy a flavor that you are, you know, that's a new flavor for you that you're not used to or buy, you know, uh, whatever, uh, a, a toothpick or buy a, like you have to think about something, okay, I'm doing this during the day and I can get stressed at any point in time and then I get up and I go and smoke a cigarette. Oh, I could probably just get up and walk around. Just getting fresh air might help. Okay, that's that. I don't really want to chew gum. I want to walk around or I don't want to walk around. And I want... So do things that you know you can do whenever that trigger goes off. You want to be able to bring that new habit into, into that you know, scenario. If you do that, you'll have success. Uh, so the first thing is plan it out. The second step is consistency is key. You have to be consistent in everything in life. It's not about you know, saving $5 this week. It's about saving $5 every week. It's not about not, you know, uh, you know, I don't know, passing on that you know, terrible meal just once today. It's about being really conscious of what it is that you're putting into your body all the time. It's not about exercising one time. You know, I've, so many people come to me and say to me, oh, I've been exercising for a week, I'm so frustrated. I'm like, whoa, what happened? I've only lost half a pound. And I'm like, okay, well, how much weight are you trying to lose? I've got these last, you know, 20 pounds that I'm trying to get, 30 pounds that I'm trying to get rid of. Well, how long did it take you to put those 30 pounds on? Oh, no, I've been this way for five years. And you expected it to come off in a day? In two days? Right? So be realistic about your expectations. Right? That's the third tip. Be realistic about your expectations. Um, and then the fourth tip is you can't be the best mom unless you're the best you. You can't be the best partner unless you're the best you. You can't be a leader in your community or the best leader in your community unless you're the best you. So be selfish. Be selfish because being selfish, you're able to give more of you and a better version of you, more quality of you to everyone else around you that needs you, especially for women, right? Because they're yeah. the center of the home. They're raising the kids. They've got amazing jobs. They're leading their you know industry they're doing so many things that if you're not taking care of yourself if you're going to rush out to another podcast because you want to bring this amazing information to your audience to your friends to your fans the people that love you and you're like i owe it to them and you're going to skip your workout every day to do that well guess what very soon you'll be a version of you that you're not in love with and if you're a version of you that you're not in love with you can't bring this energy this beautiful radiant energy that you've brought today you wouldn't be able to bring that if you weren't the best of you so I think that ultimately you have to be selfish in order to give more of you to the people that you love most. Thank you for that. That's the top four tips on how to create a new habit. I love that so much. So, okay, final questions for you. I can sit here and talk to you about all these things. We can literally go. We could, we could just maybe start a separate segment at yeah. Rosie and Marco <laughs> show. Um, I love it. Okay, so part of you know, why I created this. I wanted to create a forum for, you know, people to have access to free information. They can hear, you know, me interview people or me talk about topics, you know, to create more sustainable change in their life um, or to bring more sustainable joy, right? Because that's ultimately what, that's right. what we're doing. Um, what's the one thing that you do every day without question that creates that sustainable joy? For you love so what is the one thing that you do for yourself to create more sustainable joy love unconditionally and 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 it's because it's it, it truly is um, something that brings me so much joy to be able to love my family my wife my my kids my mom my brother my sister my friends I'm blessed with so many amazing, incredible human beings in my life that um, I have to pinch myself on a daily basis to be living the life that I'm living because I'm incredibly fortunate. I don't know what I did to deserve all this, but 
I, there's not a day that goes by that I'm not acutely aware of how fortunate I am to have the people in my life that I have. And for that, I can't give them enough love and I can't let a day go by without them knowing how much they're loved by me because it really truly brings me joy to have them in my life. And if, and if it does bring me as much joy as it brings me, then I need to reciprocate it by letting them know that um, I feel the way that I do for them. And yeah. then that just makes everything else so much easier, right? It just makes everything else so much more fun and so much more meaningful. Why want to live to be 120, 130? Like, I, I don't ever want to die. And I know that life is incredibly finite and it's really short. So I live every day as if it was my last day because, you know, it's, it's, life is super fragile and there's so much that we're not um, in control of that for me it's like I want to be aware of everything, like these beautiful, ripe white roses that we have next to us, the fact that we're able to make this happen today and spend some time together and we haven't seen each other in years. years. Um, you know, the fact that we have amazing people around us that help us and allow us to do the things that we do um, and that we live in this beautiful world and this beautiful country and that we have access to what we have access to. I mean, it's like we're living an amazing time and we could sit here and complain about all the things that aren't right or all the things that we wish we could change. But it starts with purpose, right? It starts with a purpose, and the purpose is that we love life. We love to love. We love to be around and to be near people that are sharing the same emotions and feelings that we are. So for me, it's really about um, continuing to live my truth um, and spending the most time that I can with the people that I love the most. Preach, brother. Preach. Thank you. You're um, amazing. No, you're amazing. No, so, you are. No, you are. Stop. <laughs> Um, what, I'm going to ask you just a couple, couple personal questions, just it's qu quick lightning round. They're not really that personal, but I'm just curious. What is your favorite word? Um, my favorite word. That's a good question. Um, happiness. What's your least favorite word? Anything negative. Can't, won't, don't. You know, all those words are like foreign to me. Right? It's yeah. like, I can't do this, I won't do that, I don't want to do that, yeah. never. Uh, just words that, that um, weaken you, that weaken the spirit, and make you feel as if you're powerless. We're here. Game over, right? Like, we're here. Do anything you want to do. You can make anything happen that you want to happen. Can't tell me nothing. Can't tell me no. No way. It's impossible. <laughs> if you could go back in time, what advice would you give your 15-year-old self? It's going to be a fun ride. <laughs> you don't even know what's about to happen. <laughs> Oh, smile. Just smile. It's, it's going to be so much fun. It's, it's been an amazing ride. It really has been a surreal journey. It's been a really, I mean, like my wildest dreams have come true. It's just like I'm living, I'm living a dream. I really am. I'm living a dream. It's, it's, it's amazing. It really is amazing. It's going to be fun. That's what I would say. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. <laughs> just wait for it. What advice would your 95-year-old self tell you now? We did all that? <laughs> what? <laughs> what else is left? Yeah, what else is left? Um, I want to do it all. I've got so many plans. There's so much I want to do. I'm like, life couldn't be long enough. There's so much I want to see. There's so much I want to like, do. What? There's so That's many it? people I want to hang out with. There's just so much that I want to make happen. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited for what we've done. I'm excited for what we're doing. And I'm even more excited for what's ahead. Um, we're, in a, we're living in a really beautiful time literally living in a really beautiful time. There's a lot happening. There's this elevated consciousness. There's a, there's a yearning desire for more love. Um, and all the chaos in the world just brings us closer together. Yeah. Um, we're, we're, we're seeing, I mean, we, we get to see it firsthand, right? There are the, these, these man-made boundaries are starting to be erased just because of our social consciousness. Um, and that is a beautiful thing. And the more hate you see, the more love you'll see. And, 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 and the more you know, war you see, the more peace you're going to see. Because we realize that 
all of it is really silly when you, when you think about it at the end of the day. You know, why there's so much hate in the world, why there's so much war, why there's so much anger. People are unhappy with themselves. And if, it, if, if people took more control of their own lives, I think they'd be happier individuals and they treat other people better and bring more love into their life. And in exchange, they'll bring more love into the world, into other people's lives. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. So a final question. Uh, I created this podcast to, as I said earlier, to create a, a forum for people to go to. It's really this idea that um, we are supported by the world, that the universe works for us, not against us. And it's this idea that we are radically loved by source, God, whatever your higher power is. So. It's actually two questions. The first one is, how do you feel that radical love? And the second one is, what do you radically love? Oh, easy. My family, my family. I mean, it's, it's really simple. It, it, they're the purpose and the reason for everything. Um, and I feel loved by them. Like, you know, it doesn't matter what happens in a day. It doesn't matter what I've accomplished. It doesn't matter what um, challenges we face. Um, it doesn't matter what deadlines we have, how much I have to travel, what I have to do. None of that matters. The minute I walk into my house, I feel nothing but pure, sheer love. And that is priceless. It's just, it's awesome. It's just the greatest feeling in the world. And, and it's, it's really beautiful to have children in your life because of that, right? Because there's no um, thinking about any of the challenges that we face on a daily basis, we all face challenges, right? It's how you take them on, right? It's the, 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 um, how you um, react to them, the emotion you give them. Um, but at the end of the day, kids don't think about any of that. It's just like, Bobby! <laughs> and that's it, you know? Hugs, kisses, rolling around. It's, it's the greatest in the world. And, and, it's, and, and that is um, not just what I feel radically loved by, but what I also radically love, that family. Family, 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 family. And life, I just love life. I wake up every day with a smile on my face. I just love life. Life is beautiful. I think that when people are, are aware of all that we have, you start to look at everything differently. We're so blessed. Yeah. We're so blessed. We're here. We're here. I mean, if that's not reason enough, I don't know what is. That doesn't matter how hard it gets. I've seen it all. We grew up super poor. My mom worked three jobs, single parent. We've seen it all. Struggle to get by, work hard to get ahead, but all the opportunities are here. The opportunities lie within us. They're around us, they're everywhere. You just gotta look for them. Yeah. But it starts with love and it ends with love. It's perfect. Shameless plug. Um, Marco, thank you so much thank for- you. Uh, Thank you, thank you. So great to spend some time with you. You too, for being here and for you know being a, a light in the world and for being tenacious and determined and inspirational especially to, you know, a young Latina girl like myself. It's, it's wonderful to have somebody like you to look up to. And um, I just really appreciate you from the bottom thank of my you. heart. I really thank do. You. Thank so. you. Thanks for the kindness. Thanks for the love. I really appreciate <laughs> yeah. it. And thank you for what you're doing. This is incredibly special and much needed. So congratulations. Thank you. So where can people go for more information they want to connect with you? Uh, 22 daysnutritioncom or you can find us on social at 22 Days Nutrition on Instagram and Twitter. And then Facebook, I think it's 22 Days. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> I'll link those all up. So Perfect. for those of you listening, um, all of those links will be on the show notes. So just go ahead and click the show notes and um, check it out. It's amazing. It'll change your life. So thank you. Again. Thank you. Do you want to go on an epic yoga adventure? I do. In fact, I, I, I do all the time. <laughs> when, when do I not want to go on an epic yoga adventure? And this fall, 
in an attempt to see the Northern Lights, we will go to Iceland into a journey through the chakras. It's gonna be fun. If you're curious, you can email me at rosie at radicallyloved.com or go to the show notes and click the links to each of the retreats or you can go to radicallyloved.com. See you soon. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I am so excited to continue to do this. Please share this with your friends. Email us, message us on Instagram at Rosie Acosta or on Twitter at Rosie Acosta. Subscribe on iTunes, write a review. We love doing this, so please help us continue to keep this podcast going. Thanks for listening.